uh, to this planet. It just kind of sits uh, out here on the, on the very edges of the system. Now, so this is what the UEE saw when they first came and scanned it. And they saw this, and they're like, you know what? Um, we, don't, we don't really need this system. It doesn't really do anything for us. It doesn't add anything to the empire. Um, and again, the only way to get to it would go through this uh, unclaimed system of NICs. So uh, what's, what's the use in doing that? Well, um, it turns out that uh, a few years later, um, this jump point, connecting it to Oya, was discovered. Now, at the time that uh, this jump point was discovered uh, coming in from Oya, this was, I believe, let me double check my notes here, uh, 2721. So it's like five years after the initial discovery. Oya also uh, was already part of what was called the Perry Line. Now, for those unfamiliar, the Perry Line was basically uh, a string of systems that separated the UEE from uh, the Xi'an Empire during the Cold War, but particularly during the time of the Messers. These systems, like Oya, were basically completely abandoned on both sides. They'd run their military uh, patrols through them uh, just to keep an eye on it, but they were considered no man's land. Th these were buffer systems that were meant to try to keep the empire separate. When Oya and Tohill were suddenly connected, that became suddenly maybe a, a more strategic place for the UEE to own. So they moved on in, and in 27-21, that is when they officially claimed the system because they figured they could stage other military uh, units in Toe Hill. So if anything ever went down in Oya here, they could send in the military from Toe Hill. And Castra, also right down here, had a large military contingent. So they figured this would be a great, you know, now that it's connected to Oya, it's become strategically important. They claimed the system. And they kind of went in and uh, were spending time there. And while they were there, uh, over the course of the years, they were doing more scanning. And that's when the second large jump point, which connects it to Virtus, uh, up here was discovered. Now, Virtus is a, is a Xi'an system. It, it would basically become part of the Perry Line, too. So the Perry Line up in this part of the map uh, would kind of go right through here, all, all three of these systems. But the second that Toe Hill got connected to Virtus, it was no longer this kind of insulated system that was like Nixon Oya that the UE could completely control. Now the Xi'an also had a direct route right into the Toe Hill system. And this, this kind of changed the equation and the math on whether or not it was going to be worth to keep the system or how, how much it was going to be worth for the UE to spend time in the system. Because if you kept a military contingent there, it would be very expensive to, to basically watch this jump point, uh, kind of be prepared for anything that might come from Oya. And of course, if something does go on there, you're kind of isolated because Oya is an empty system. Nix is, is, uh, is a system which is, uh, there's no military presence in it for the UE. So getting any backup or resources to the system in case of an attack or an emergency or anything would, would be much more difficult than expected, or than, than you would want it to be. So because of this discovery to the Virtus system, the UEE military presence in Toe Hill, uh, they decided to pull it back. And they pulled it back to Castro here. They, they moved it back uh, all the way here. Um, just and, and basically left Toe Hill alone. They added it to the Perry line, said this is basically another one of the buffer systems people can come and go through um, just in case to kind of keep our peace. Now, by, by the time this happened, Toe Hill had been known in Nick's for a while, and when the military moved out, they realized, wait a minute, now we have the system here, which used to just be connected here, which also leads us into Xi'an space. So a lot of entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and smugglers and different human elements realized... Yes, my upload is running. ...wanted to get out of the UEE. Toe Hill was now a viable option, and it was one the military really wasn't spending that much time or attention on. Um, so it was during this period that Toe Hill got the reputation it uh, still has today as basically a smuggler's paradise. It's a place that uh, not many people thought of. They didn't think, as I explained before, there's nothing really in this system. So, um, and that's the way that the, the pirates and the smugglers kept it for years and years and years because they didn't want people coming there because they... they yes, I like to watch this because now I better understand what uh, the, the thoughts behind Star Citizen, what their plans I did not know about this uh, star map yesterday. Yes, I have heard it, but I, I thought I did not know what it was. But uh, I better understand now, actually, they're actually planning to make all these uh, star systems.
with all this uh, planet you can go and visit with all the moons, asteroid belts, citizens and uh, jump points, all this. So that's a big, big, big work. Yes, I think we have like uh, 50 star system systems, but I talked about that last time, so it takes half a year just to make one star system, that's 25 years, so uh, that's actually just a problem if they would like to make a star system with uh, all these planets in very very high quality and outpost and uh, some cities and uh, it all has to be custom made and that would take really long time. So it's just if you take uh, yes, just half a year to make one system with all planets, outposts, all objects, and you have 50, that's 25 years. So, uh, so that you think about that, how to do that faster. Wanted to use this as as kind of the main smuggling route between the UEE and the Xi'an Empire through the end of the Cold War. Um, now, what, what the... Yes, I'm thinking about the Stanton, uh, Stanton, Stanton uh, star system that's even not uh, finished yet. And of course we should have the Sun, the Sun, uh, the Earth star system we really need, that's the Earth. Yes, then the planet in uh, our star solar systems. Yes, I think the star, star system called so, but I'm not sure it again. Yes, Sol is uh, Sun, Sol is on Dennis. I don't know why they select this name. They maybe have a Dennis in the Star Citizen, because Sol is a uh, Dennis world for Sun. Yes, like uh, Null, that's Null, like uh, the Zero, they call it Null. It's a Danish word too, so I don't know why. They maybe have a Danish in Star Citizen, I think so. The smugglers realize when we go back to Toehill 3, which is this ocean world I told you about earlier, is that uh, Toehill 3 has, um, it doesn't have large, it doesn't have any land masses to populate, but it has a very interesting ecology. It has these, what they call living islands. There are these large biomasses that um, uh, are a part that are, are part of the ocean and kind of connected have these deep roots underground and uh, nobody knows exactly when or who did it but at some point uh, supposedly a, uh, a smuggler uh, had to crash land on this planet and just because they had no other choice they set down their ship on one of these large uh, floating formations uh, plant uh, masses and it helped uh, and they realized over the time that these actually were sturdy and strong enough, whatever whatever these plants were, that they could support humans walking around, uh, landing ships, even starting to build some structures on them. So for years and years and years, they, they wanted to put forward this myth that nothing was there so that every one of these smugglers and pilots could have their own little like floating island that they could maybe deck out, things like parts of the Caribbean style. Like this is their own secret little place where they can go and hide their ship and build and build something a uh, place to hang out and, and hide their loot and stuff like that. So it, it was it was a boon for uh, the smugglers at the time that people didn't think there was really much going on here on uh, Toe Hill 3. Now, the, the popularity for it as a smuggling destination actually then came in to be a big part of UEE history because um, in 2789, a young Emperor Cray, who uh, was the ruler of the Xi'an Empire, actually came to the system to meet with a senator from Terra by the name of Terence Akarai. Now, they sat down and they had the first um, kind of human and Xi'an meeting to talk about the Cold War and try to negotiate a, a solution to it. And what they walked away from at the end of this, uh, at the end of this conference, which was done in complete secret, nobody else in the UE or, or the Xi'an Empire knew about it, is they walked away with an agreement that if the Messer government and basically the Earth part of the UEE at any point did an attack on the Xi'an Empire, Terra and the more what you would call maybe uh, forward-thinking um, wing of the UEE uh, as, as represented by Terra would support the Xi'an and, and would not fight in any attack against them that the Messers tried to put forward at this time. 
when this uh, treaty was basically announced to the general public, it, it, it was one of those things that it didn't have an immediate impact, but it, it, uh, it, it was definitely one of the key factors into the downfall of the Messers because it showed just how toothless they were um, in being able to stop something like that. And it, it, it really galvanized those who were anti-Messer and probably more of a pro-Terabent that, uh, that there was hope that there could be a peace to this Cold War. So uh, it's a very important system in the history of the UE for, for bringing peace and a bit of stability. Um, yes, I recalled one hour. This agreement. Um, I have recalled one hour and two hours left. And I did stop this many times. I'm very sorry to talk about it. But I just have to get started. It is 5 p.m. evening, the day after Christmas, and I just got up my bed a little more than one hour ago, so I had to get my day started, and yes, of course, I cannot sleep uh, at midnight, so that will be late again. It's 5 p.m., so in uh, six hours, seven hours is uh, midnight, and I cannot sleep in uh, six hours. Seven hours. Uh, just got just up. Other really quick things about uh, Toe Hill Three, because this is the system, or this is the planet. When you visit the system, you'll be able to go visit visit some of the landing zone, see some of there. Um, it's uh, just e even though the system isn't, or this planet isn't technically recognized by the UE Senate, there are still some UE laws that do govern the type of building that does go on here, because the the floating biomasses that that take up this planet. Um, they don't want to put too many people, too many ships, or too many large structures on them that may, that may have an adverse effect on them. Uh, a very famously, uh, Amadon Island uh, sank um, here. It was the, the biggest and the most populous island, uh, kind of like the uh, island mass on this planet. And it sank for people, most people believe it's because of what humanity did, putting so many structures on it, um, that it eventually just brought it to, you know, kind of, all the weight brought it down and destroyed whatever structure, however, however the biomass uh, works here. Um, so it's uh, it's an interesting place. It's not going to be too heavily, heavily populated all over the place because of the strange living conditions. But it's uh, it's definitely a very unique and unusual place in the history of uh, of the system. And one final thing to note, as I said, the uh, Toe Hill Belt Alpha. Uh, there are some minerals in there, and you could probably make uh, make a few bucks if you're a smaller miner wanting to go out there and do some digging around. Um, but it, just be warned that um, again, this system became a smuggler's paradise. There there is a very strong outlaw presence in this system, and this dense asteroid belt is also one of those areas where um, pirates, outlaws will hang out, set up traps, uh, maybe try to hide their their their, their whatever they have. Um, in certain places here. So even though mining might be profitable for some, it can also be quite dangerous. But of course it is possible to uh, design all this. just need a lot of money and you need a lot of uh, staff, employment. You need a lot of designers just sitting uh, weeks after weeks and weeks. But uh, I think they have that. I don't know how many uh, employees uh, the Star Citizen have, I think that's a big company, I think they have like uh, really many, like 100 people and they need to have uh, payments, paychecks, so that's a lot of money in uh, payment they need every month and every year, so yes, so that's a very good way to do the founding by selling uh, the ships on the website, so and I will buy uh, some ships myself when I got some money. So just a little heads up if you decide to venture into uh, the Toe Hill asteroid belt. Yes, so, I will uh, buy the Constellation Towers. Look at the Toe Hill system, uh, which I will do that. In, uh, in the game at some point in the future. Hope you enjoy. And the I need a fighter to a bit of the science uh, behind it. Um, and we'll see you next time on Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the yes, latest that's today, Chris Roberts. Please follow us on our social media channel. The founder of Stasis. <laughs>
But I don't know, uh, but I just like to continue actually, I like to see this myself because I better understand what uh, what Star Citizen is. Let's search for Ellis. Bookmark and so you can just press this or you can press this. Yes, this is Ellis, and this is a dwarf if size, have no size, and it have a one planet, two planets, have this green, three planets, have a lot of planets, that's a big one. Seven planets, eight have a lot of planets. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten planets. Yes, but uh, let's start from uh, the beginning. Yes, that's the Ellis uh, one. It have no life, that's too close to the sun. Habitat, no. Protoplanets, this protoplanet is a scorched. I cannot say every word, I'm not English. This word I cannot say, scorched. Barren ball of rock and bubbling magma due to ext extreme proximity to a star. While the possibility exists that there are major deposits of minerals on the planet, mining them would fare. But uh, you could go there if you have some uh, special mining ship that could take tremendous amount of heat. You could maybe go there, but probably should not do that. That's too close to the sun. Then we have. Uh, the Ellis number two, that's too close. Habitat two, smart planets. Ellis two, large size proximity to its sun and surprisingly thick atmosphere has left its entire surface a massive desert market with strange swivels and ridges created by frequent massive storms. Yes, you can go there, smart planets. I have a jump point and I think we have a planet called Green, I think that is Habitat, Ocean Planet, yes. The vaste oceanic world mostly known as the primary resort destination for race goers who enjoy green high in magma resorts. In an effort to protect the elaboration on the water reef, ships landing on the planet are directed towards specific landing zones. It's ocean planets, so that's one. Yes, that's planet green. And let's have this planet, Campos, that's number four. Habitat, yes, Super Earth, Campos, Ellis 4, named after the last sea creatures that once stalked its deep oceans. Campos was the first. World settled and continues to boost the highest population center in the system. So that's that's the number two. We have another planet, the Ellis number five, Noble. Yes, the planet Noble, Ellis five, the Habitats, Habitat, yes. So this solar, this star system had a lot of life. 
the emerald jewel of the system. Noble is known for the vast stretches of woodland, evoking many comparisons to an undeveloped earth. The local Governor's Council has made sustaining the planet's natural beauty. So that should be a very, very beautiful planet. I will go there one day and explore in the future. But uh, they have to design. So that was number three planets, habitable uh, planets. In Elis. And that's the Elis 5. Elis 5. I don't know what it says. Uh, null. We have another star system called Null. Yes, Elis 5. Habitat no terrestrial rocky. A terrestrial planet located just outside the system's green bands. Yes, this is the green band when you can have uh, Earth-like uh, life and uh, liquid water and atmospheres. Although the planet is technically only happy at Elis 5, Elis 6 have been used to conduct studies about human habitations. They have lots of planets. Yes, that's Elis 7. And the other one was number 6. So I just say wrong. Yes, now I press wrong. Elis 7. Habitat, no. Smog planet, a corrosive and poisonous. Atmosphere covers this planet, make it is impossible to terraform or even land on. Okay. It's not a good place to go. That's a 7. Then we have the 8. Ellis 8. Habitat no, dwarf planets, the smallest planet in the system, it is 8, boost a um, micro atmosphere and a little else. Yes, that's the 8. And we have the 9. I think that's number nine. The Wally Walleye. Yes. The Walleye planets. That's a puffy planet. Nicknamed Wally Walleye by long distance haulers. Elis 9 is a swearing gas giant that intermittently suffers from massive storm and visitors from space. That's the number nine. So this is a huge, huge, huge. And we have number ten. So that will really take long times. Oh, we have eleven, but that's uh, number nine. But let's look. Where's number ten? Yes, that's a number 10. Elis 10, Bombora. That's gas giants. The second gas giant in Elis systems, Elis 10. Futures as consentiently turbulent atmosphere. It was this chaotic nature that led to its local nickname, Bombora. So that's a huge, 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 huge star system. This is that's the number 10. And we have a number 11. Let's 
So uh, number 11, this one. It was lesser asteroid fields. 